Shelford's Law of Tolerance The presence and success of an organism depend upon the completeness of a complex of conditions. Absence or failure of an organism can be controlled by the qualitative or quantitative deficiency or excess with respect to any one of several factors which may approach the limits of tolerance for that organism. A limiting factor is not only something too little as proposed by Liebig, but also too much as in case of such factors as heat, light, and water. Victor Salford one of the earliest North American animal ecology was the first to formalize the idea of physiology ecology by applying Liebig's law to distribution of species in natural communities. Selford's law of tolerance, which can be stated as follows: distribution of a species is controlled by the environmental factor for which the species has the narrow tolerance. Surface temperatures never drop very low in his region, but can be quite high on exposed rocky soil above the middle tide line. We can conduct tolerance studies for oxygen, pH, salinity, and many other environmental factors, and build up a detailed picture if the limits of tolerance for any particular species. Illustrating the law of toleration, the abundance of animal is shown below the horizontal line in relation to a group of factors shown above the horizontal line. Some subsidiary principle to the law of tolerance may be stated as follows. First, organism may have a wide range of tolerance for one factor and a narrow range for another. Second, organism with wide range of tolerance for all factors are likely to be most widely distributed. Third, when conditions are not optimum, the limits of tolerance may be reduced with respect to other ecological factors. Fourth, very frequently it is discovered that organisms in nature are not actually living at the optimum range with regard to a particular physical factor. Fifth, the period of reproduction is usually a critical period when environmental factors are most likely to be limiting. The Antarctic fish Trematomus bernacci and the desert pupfish Cyprinodon macularius provide an extreme contrast in limits of tolerances related to the very different environments in which they live. The Antarctic fish has a limit of temperature tolerance of less than 4 Celsius degree in the range of minus 2 to plus 2 and is thus extremely stenothermally cold adapted. In contrast, the desert fish is urethermal and also urihaline, tolerating temperatures between 10 and 40, and salinities ranging from fresh water to that greater than sea water. As we have emphasized, organisms are not just slaves to the physical environment. They adapt themselves and modify the physical environment so as to reduce the limiting effects of temperature, light, water, and other physical conditions of existence. Such factor compensations particularly effective at the community level of organization but also occurs within the species. Species with wide geographical range almost always develop locally adapted populations called ecotypes that have optima and limits of tolerances adjusted to local conditions. Compensation along gradients of temperature, light, or other factors may involve genetic races or merely physiological acclimation. At the community level, factor compensation is most frequently accomplished by species replacement in the environmental gradient. Example, in coastal water scope pods of the genus Acartia are often dominant forms in the zooplankton. Commonly, the species present in winter will be replaced in summer by other species that are more precisely adapted to warmer temperatures. Thank you, that Shelford's law of tolerance from us. Hope you understand. Bye!